In this video, let's learn what is service mesh. In previous videos, we actually learned what is inter-service communications, right? Um, so it is really necessary for two or more microservices to talk to each other to update the data or query the data or do so many things. So there are a lot of challenges in, you know, when we are talking from one service to another services. We learned what is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous communication but we didn't really understand what are the challenges and uh, you know what are the different use cases we need to handle when we are communicating between microservices. Say, for example, um, consider this is like one, two, three, four different microservices. They have multiple instances of services running, right? Maybe the, the fourth one is only one. Um, so how do we basically, when we are talking from one microservice to another microservices, how do we actually do the load balancing? Which specific instance we are connecting? Maybe like we understood that we can use RPC or REST via HTTP, right? Consider we are doing via HTTP REST. Now, if you are talking from, if you are making a call from microservice one to microservice two, we know that there are two instances of microservices to which one we are going to connect and um, what is the IP address and the port to which we need to connect. We also understood that service discovery or service registry will actually have the latest network addresses of all of the microservices, right? But we need to query the service registry first and then out of which we need to select one and then we have to make a query. That's how we basically do the load balancing. And for the load balancing, we'll have to choose some strategy, either random or you know round robin or something. Who is going to do all of that? It's not just one services problem. The same problem actually occurs in every services where it is making a call, right? Because the same thing happens here as well. In the microservice too, we need to get service registry for this microservice, this microservice, and also we need to balance, load balance that. So these are the two problems, right? We have to do the load balancing. We had to get this, we had to discover where is the service and also metrics, collecting the metrics is also a problem. Say, for example, uh, we are making a call to from one microservice to another and this to this. We have to get some insights of what is the response time, what is the request time and how many were failed, how many were passed, in total how many requests we are making between services. Out of that, who is going to collect all of this information? Maybe we can log from every microservice to some log file, and then we have to do further processing to get that. Or we can build uh, sophisticated systems where uh, we can actually in real time see how many calls are happening, are there any 500s or 400s. For that also, we need to have a system which actually collects all of this metric, metrics, right? And who is going to do that? And also retries, for example. Now, say for example, I'm making a call from one to two. If this service is failing, I will maybe consider to retry. We also learned that circuit breaking uh, concept, right? Um, so who will do that circuit breaking? And also who will make sure uh, we are retrying um, to check if that service is running or not, or maybe just check once. Or say, if I make a call from microservice one to two, and if microservice two is not responding even after two to three minutes, it's, it doesn't mean that we have to keep waiting until microservice two closes the connection. We have to have a timeout, right? Who is going to set that timeout? What if the developer forgets to set the timeout when he's making a call for microservice one to two, or maybe two to three? There should be some one you know place where we can configure a, you know, a standard timeout to all of these you know, interactions between microservices. Um, so who, where can we do that? Um, and yeah, so that retries timeout and circuit breaking. So who is going to do all of that? And, and definitely developers should do that, but the same problems occurs in every microservices where a microservice is making a call. And it's definitely not advised to implement that everywhere. So that's where the service mesh comes in, comes in and solves all of the problem. So service mesh is one more component which actually runs along with every microservice deployment and helps to do all of these things. Say this is how it looks, for example, uh, you can think it as a VM or you know a Docker pod or a container or whatever you want to. 
Okay, so when we deploy the microservice um, server or when when it is running, we have to deploy micro, you know service mesh also. If you have ten different microservices or ten instances of microservices, there will be ten instances of service mesh which is running parallel to the same microservice um, for every microservice. So this basically it is a pattern called as a sidecar pattern. So if you have read about different design patterns, then sidecar is one pattern which uh, service mesh implements. That means that for every microservice uh, instance, there will be an instance of service mesh which is running um, in that VM pod or container. What it does is it actually helps to solve all of this problem, okay? And uh, one more thing you need to understand is this also implements proxy design pattern. Uh, you, have, you, you guys definitely know the proxy, but just for the sake of beginners, I'm just going to explain the proxy. Um, proxy is think it like a you know agent or a mediator, right? Say for example, in a lot of companies, um, they implement proxy for browsing the internet. Say uh, if they want to limit or block some of the sites, what they do is they have a company-wide proxy. Uh, every um, desktop or laptop basically talks, uh, browses all the websites or the internet through this proxy. Uh, when you actually browse youtube.com, um, the request actually goes to proxy and proxy is the one which actually makes a call to YouTube server and gets back. So if your company doesn't really want to allow youtube.com to be uh, accessed, then they can just block it here and show the error page or login page uh, to be logged in by only specific people in the company to access that uh, channel or anything. So there are so many other things you can do uh, in the proxy. Basically, it sits in between uh, the source and the destination or between two parties and it uh, exchanges the information uh, in the same format or the same protocol. Um, so that's, that's the same thing here as well. Service mesh actually acts as a proxy um, between different microservices. So how it works, how service mesh works is whenever, whenever a microservice actually makes a call to my, uh, you know, microservice two, as I mentioned, so this is considered this as a service mesh and this is our microservice actual server, okay? We actually make a call to this service using service mesh and service mesh actually makes a call to microservices, microservice two. So that way we don't need to in our code, we don't need to really, uh, you know, do the service registry first to identify what is the IP address and host name to talk to those microservice two. Or we don't need to really worry about load balancing. Even though there are hundred instances of microservice two, we don't need to really worry about that at all. Or we don't need to worry about service registry. Or we don't need to log the metrics as well. Like we don't need to time it. Like when the request started and when it ended, we don't need to really do that. We just need to call it simple like request.get, that's all. Um, the metrics will be calculated by this service mesh. Um, and then uh, it, it collects it, and then it sends everything to one specific um, uh, component, which is also deployed along with the service mesh to collect all the metrics. Say every service meshes here. If they are making any request further, they are all actually sending all the metrics back to the metrics server. So you actually have all of the, you know, metrics available in this, uh, you know, uh, metrics server uh, to be seen in real time. That's also possible. Um, and, and similarly, when microservice two is actually wants to talk to, make a call to microservice four or three, we actually use this service mesh as a proxy and then make a call to microservice three or four. So that way, we, the service mesh actually provides all of these uh, features by default. It takes care of timeout. We can set the timeout, uh, and, and after that timeout, the service service mesh basically automatically closes the connection and returns back whatever error response. It also implements circuit breaking. So if some services are failing, as we learned from the previous video, it does all the things you can configure fallback, you can configure cache, um, uh, whatever the circuit breaking feature supports. It also actually handles retries as well. If you want to really set a retry mechanism, okay, if once, uh, if I get a 
you know, error code for first time, maybe try once more and then implement the circuit breaking. So all these possibilities is possible without even implementing, without even worrying about all of this information. So basically we get the same reliability, um, reliable connection between every microservices and we get all of these features by implementing um, service mesh. In service mesh, there are two major components. The first one is data plane and the second one is control plane. The control plane is the centralized hub or a single hub which acts like a control panel from which you can actually configure configuration for all of the proxies which are actually uh, side loaded along with every microservice running in every instance. The second one, second major component is data plane. The data plane is a group of all of these proxies basically. The important interesting thing is these proxies doesn't know the existence of other proxies in the same cluster. They basically work independently. So using control plane, we basically provide all of the configuration to these individual proxies so the proxies know how to behave. Basically proxies are the one which actually does the load balancing, service discovery, metrics, retries and timeout uh, uh, the requests, etc. Basically the data plane uh, is comprised of pro proxies and all of the requests actually goes through these proxies. So you can say all of the requests are actually happening in data plane. Um, the control plane is actually the one which actually controls all of these proxies and provides the configurations and settings.